Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem again deals with two springs and a mass of one kilogram, but in this case this, the mass is positioned between the two springs which are fastened on two anchors on either side. We're applying a force to the mass and we're pushing the mass 0.5 meters away from the equilibrium point. We know that the spring constant K1 is equal to 40 newtons per meter and spring constant K2 is equal to 10 newtons per meter and yes indeed there is a coefficient of friction of 0.2 between the surface and the block. So first the block gets pushed 0.5 meters to the right. We're supposed to figure out how much work is done to accomplish that and then the block is released, the block will slide back in the other direction and we're supposed to figure out what the velocity of the block will be by the time the block reaches the equilibrium point. So let's start with the first part. How much work is done by pushing the block 0.5 meters away from the equilibrium point? So we can say that the work done to do that equals the work done to elongate spring number one plus the work done to compress spring number two plus the work done to overcome friction. So that is the total work done to push the block to the right. So the work done is equal to one half kx1 squared. Well, actually, it should be k1x squared because x will be the same for both springs, so we don't have an x of one, we simply have an x. Then plus one half k2x squared and then plus the work done to overcome friction, which is the friction force times the distance. Of course, the friction force, if we take a look at this, we have the weight pushing down, which is mg. We have the normal force pushing back, which is equal to mg. And then we have the friction force in this direction, which by the definition is the normal force times mu, which would be mg times mu. Plugging all that into the equation, we have the work done is equal to 1 half times k1, which is 40, times x1, which is 0 0.5 squared, plus 1 half k2, which is 10, times the same distance, 0 0.5 squared, plus the friction force, which is the mass, which is 1, times g, which is 9.8, that's m times g, mu is 0 0.2, and distance is 0 0.5. Calculating what each of those are, so the work done by the force to push the block 0.5 meters is, this would be 0.25 times 40, which is 10 times 1 half, which is 5, and of course that's joules, 5 joules, plus this would be uh, 0.25 times 10, that is 2.5 times 1 half, which would be 1.25 joules. That would be half of 2.5, all right, it's a quarter of that. And then the amount of work done to overcome friction, that is 0.1 times this is 0 0.98, 0 0.98 joules. So numbers are readily and kind of easy. And so we can see then that this is to overcome to compress, or in this case, to elongate spring one, to compress spring through, and to overcome the friction. When we add it all together, the work done is equal to 6.25, that would be 7.23 joules. All right. So now for part two. We let go, and the block slides in the opposite direction. So we then know that the initial energy in the system will then be converted to kinetic energy. So we can use the energy equation, work put into the system, plus the initial potential energy, plus the initial kinetic energy is equal to potential energy final, plus kinetic energy final, plus any energy lost, in this case, to overcome friction. So when we let go, there's no work put into the system, so it's equal to zero. The potential energy stored in the system is the potential energy that's stored in those two springs, which is a total of 6.25 joules. Plus zero kinetic energy, because the block is not moving at the time of release. Potential energy final would be zero by the time, oh, I should have an equal sign here, so this is equal. Potential energy final will be zero because there's no compressed or elongated spring. 
kinetic energy will be one half mv squared and energy lost will be again the same amount of energy that we have to overcome friction for the same distance force times distance would be 0 0.98 joules moving that to the other side we subtract that so that would be 5.27 joules is equal to one half m which is one times v squared so twice this, that would be 10.54 is equal to V squared, or V is equal to the square root of 10.54. And so the velocity, when the block gets back to the equilibrium point, will be equal to 10.54, take the square root of that, which is 3.25 meters per second. 3.25 meters per second. And that will be the velocity of the block when it reaches the equilibrium point again. Let's see if we got the same result as this. That's how it's done.